Now I would like to introduce you to uh, today's deep dive speakers. We are very excited to have uh, a fabulous, fabulous team for the University of Pittsburgh to virtually visit us. Hai Hui Zhang is the head of East Asian Library and the Chinese Studies Librarian at the University of Pittsburgh Library. She initiated and served as the principal investigator for an oral history project on the culture revolution called CR10 and for the contemporary Chinese village data pro pro project. She is editor in, she, in chief of a number of major publications, introducing, in, in, uh, including a scholar review of Chinese studies in North America, published by the Association for Asia Studies in 2013. And uh, our Chinese studies in North America, research and the resources published by Zhonghua Shuju in, 2000, in 2010. Hai Hui will be working with two assistants today. Uh, Yuan Ziyi Zhang is a, a second year master's student in East Asian languages and the literatures at the University of P Pittsburgh. She was previously trained in mathematics. Uh, Ruo Yun Zheng, is a third year PhD student in the social and uh, uh, comparative analysis program at the School of Education, University of Pittsburgh. Today they were speak, they were speaking on from village gazetteers to database, introdu introduction to contemporary Chinese village data, Shu Zi Chun Without further ado, let's welcome Hai Hui. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Ms. Uh, Yi Chun Wang's uh, introduction. And uh, also thanks the uh, Liplo Roger Center for Chinese Studies and the uh, Asia Library provide us uh, this opportunity to introduce and uh, demonstrate the CCVG data project to faculty and the students at the University of Michigan. In today's uh, workshop, I will start with the brief introduction of uh, Village Gazetteers Publishing, uh, why we re uh, initiated the CCVG data project. Then two of my sister, uh, sisters will provide detail of the project and uh, do a demo, including the data categories, the data extraction, and the review procedure, current stage, and the final goal, as well as the data downloading and the data dictionary. And then we may have a short Q&A session. Uh, I believe most of you, uh, many of you, at, especially from humanity field, are familiar with the Chinese local gazetteers. Uh, just in case, here I have a definition uh, on the slide. The local gazetteer, Difangzhi or Fangzhi for short, sometimes also called the local history. They were often compiled by a number of the uh, local elite and they were pub uh, produced uh, under the sponsorship of the local officials. They form one of the most important source for the study of Chinese history in the past 1,000 years, since they contain copious, uh, copious uh, materials on local administration, local economics, local cultures, local dialects, local officials, and the local uh, dignitaries materials that often cannot be found elsewhere. The Chinese local gazetteer compilation has a long history. Now that's uh, published before 1949, uh, commonly called the traditional gazetteer, Jiu Fangzhi or Chuantong Fangzhi in Chinese. Those uh, published after 1949 called contemporary gazetteer, Xin Fangzhi in Chinese. Uh, there are other definitions by Chinese and Western scholars. To summarize, there are some uh, features of uh, local gazetteer, no matter traditional ones or contemporary ones. First, uh, it's, uh, since a local gazetteer contains a comprehensive content about a local, it's also called a local encyclopedia. And uh, there's a special type, you special and unique type of primary, Chinese uh, primary source. The local gazetteer uh, contain both text and the data. Compared with uh, traditional gazetteers, contemporary ones 
have more data included. Local gazetteer are periodically compiled with a very uh, cycles. Each local gazetteer has a retrospective content, brief in previous version and uh, detailed in current cycle. Um, contemporary local gazetteer can be categorized in different ways, like a uh, subject, profession, uh, such as uh, etc. By administrative division, there are provi pro uh, province gazetteer, city gazetteer, county gazetteer, village gazetteer, township gazetteer, etc. So on the slides. Uh, compare with the traditional local gazetteer, I list the three features of contemporary gazetteer here. First, so far, no national level gazetteer exists, which is called yitongzhi in traditional ga uh, gazetteer. The second is uh, most of gazetteer at the provincial city level have multiple value on subject and they may publish them separately. So you can see on the um, Slides, the Shandong Sheng Shang Ye Zhi, Chongqing Shi Wei Sheng Zhi, Beijing Huan Yi Bao Zhi, this example. The third uh, feature is a uh, gazetteer at the township, neighborhood, and the village level has not received enough attention yet. Even Chinese uh, he, local gazetteer has a thousand year history. Village gazetteer was not a typical type among them. On the slide is the first book named with a Chunzhi, titled Xinhua Chunzhi. The Xinhua Chunzhi is considered the first village gazetteer from the Qing Dynasty. The, dynasty, uh, the native of uh, Guichi, Langsui, compiled 12 chapters of uh, Xinhua Chunzhi due to his love to hometown, hometown. In Kangxi period, he spent 11 years from a compilation to complete. Few other village gazetteers have been, have been done, uh, hand down today. The large scale compilation of a contemporary village gazetteer began in the 80s last century. Here is the definition of a village gazetteer from Zhongguo Chunzhi Wang. Chunzhi is a type of a local gazetteer which are written in a certain administrative village or natural village. Village gazetteer and the township gazetteer are important part of a local gazetteer, and uh, which was which has an extension and the supplement of a provincial, municipal, and the county gazetteer. It takes the basic administrative unit as the object of a description, and the comprehensive counts the. Can, condition of uh, rural geography, history, economics, custom, culture, education, properties, and the people. It's a very precious hi her hist historical heritage with a special historical value, uh, cultural value, and uh, academic value. Has a irreplaceable, irreplaceable function of other books. So here are two terms for your information. Usually an uh, administrative village called Xingzheng Chun in Chinese includes a several natural village called Ziran Chun. And there is a basic administrative unit in countryside of China. Regarding content, what the slides show is the content of a village gazetteer in general. Actually, each gazetteer's content may vary in comprehensive level. You can see from these uh, slides, uh, uh, most of the village gazetteer includes administrative region, event, chronology, natural environment, recent day, agriculture, whatever. To save time, I don't read all of them. The next slide, please. So this is all the content in general from a uh, village gazetteer. Since the last century, more and more village gazetteer has been compiled with a retrospect, retrospective content to 1949. The chronology back to ancient time as far as the time of a village formation and establishment. However, so far, not each of village has their gazetteer 
uh, published. And the publication status is very as well. Unlike provincial, uh, provincial gazetteer, municipal gazetteer, county gazetteer, all of them are published formally and officially. Here is a publication status among 1,000 uh, 71 valid gazetteer from a CCVG data project. You can see the official normal uh, published, which means uh, the book with the ISP number, the number is uh, 408. Unofficial published, self published, which means uh, a book without the ISP number is uh, 454. The internal public, published, uh, means uh, the book, which means the character, Neibu Chuban, appeared in the book. The number is uh, 208, 209. So you can see the number of officially published is much smaller than unofficially self-published ones. We can tell some difference on content and the language used among different publishing status. The content, uh, the content of format and the language in is a and the, in the official formal published ones is a much more standardized however unpub, uh, official the self published ones may have more raw data and the use of natural language in text for example you can see more records of uh, historical facts like uh, land reform the great leap forward famine and the cultural revolution such a the next uh, slide shows the library's holding information today. This search, by, uh, this search made uh, um, on March 5th. Of course, there's a lot of overlap among the library's holding. You can see the National Library of China holds a 600 village gazetteer. The Library, uh, uh, library of Congress in the United States uh, has a 72. Harvard Yanjing Library has a 1,237. The University of Pittsburgh Library System hold uh, 2060-24 and the growing. Uh, so far, the Pitt Library holds the largest collection of village gazetteer, and uh, we have been spent a special budget to collect uh, from uh, 2005 through publisher, uh, e uh, private individuals, and the uh, vendor even send uh, someone to countryside to collect. So to a certain uh, extent, Pitt Collaborative's village gazetteer collection reflecting on Chinese village gazetteers existing, existing situation, not only a single library's collection. Next, why we create the, initiate the CCVG data project? Uh, you can see some project on Xiangcun Jianshe has created in mainland China and the database can be accessed on uh, internet as well. However, current existing ones have some kind of a shortcoming. Uh, data uh, from a different source literature, such as yearbooks, mm, annual report, newsletter, is uh, hard to compare. Uh, next one is only limited data at a village level with uh, in incoherent year and uh, unclear data definition. Most of the data are scanned as text. In addition to above, as a librarian for decades, uh, personal experience also made me to initiate the project. In the past decades, I have encountered challenge to locate some data uh, to meet my faculty members' needs such as uh, electricity consumption, electricity price in different regions. So information service experience make library have uh, discovered of data gaps. So from uh, 2018, the CCVG data project was initiated. First, because we hold the largest collection. Second, I have received the Universal Pittsburgh and the uh, library's strong support. In 2018, I received the seed funding from the Chancellor Office of the University. With the funding, we were able to start the project and uh, complete the first 500 village data. 
So all data from uh, the CCAG, uh, CCVG project are from unified literature basis at the intuitive village Gazetteer. And they cover the same historical state from 1949 to the year the Gazetteer compiled. And the latest data now is uh, 2019. The final goal of the project is uh, 3,000 village data extracted and accessible by the end of uh, 2022. Next, Ms. Yuan Ziyi Zhang and Ms. Ruo Yun Zhang will present uh, you the project's details. Thank you, Haihui, for starting us off. Uh, I'm Yuan Ziyi Zhang, and I am currently working as the project coordinator of the Contemporary Chinese Village uh, Gazetteer Data Project. I will first introduce the project specifics to you, and later my colleague Ruo Yun is going to demonstrate the features on our website and how to download the data sets. Okay, so here is a quick glimpse of the project. Supported by the provost office, it was initiated by the East Asian Library at the University of Pittsburgh in 2018. And we are now collaborating with the School of Computing and Information to build a database and a user interface that allows cross search and more advanced sorting methods. Um, as Haihui uh, already mentioned, the project aims to extract data from ULS's Chinese Village Gazetteer collection. And the data sets cover a, a wide range of topics, including both quantitative and qualitative information. Next, I will elaborate a bit more on the distinctive features of the CCVG data comparing to other existing sources of China's rural data. First of all, um, the extracted data are extremely comprehensive in 18 categories and 147 subcategories. You can see here, we have 12 topics gazetteer information, that is the publication year and publication type, um, village information that includes administrative division, its coordinates on the map, and the distance between village and its affiliated town. And natural environment like altitude, precipitation, and average temperature, um, in addition, uh, see, we cover 20 types of natural disasters, the total count of last names and the five most common last names, the year, year of first availability or purchase of like pipe water, electricity service, television, and so forth. We also have ethnic groups, population migration, military, politics, and management, uh, economy, family planning, and education. Okay, so for the last six topics, we extract both yearly and range data. Yearly data uh, simply means uh, the number at exactly one particular year. And for the range data, we have the start year and year and the number to document uh, information within the time period. Um, but for either yearly or ranch data, they come directly from the gazetteers and we rarely make modifications to the data. And below here are a couple of examples of data that are difficult to find elsewhere, like the number of civil mediations, the electricity price of agricultural, industrial, household or commercial use. Here is a screenshot of the data structure. A complete one can be found on our website. Uh, we can notice that some categories are extremely extensive with many subcategories. And we aim to preserve as much information as possible from one book. So, okay. 
Okay. And the second point, which I will really briefly talked about, is that we focus on administrative villages or Xingzhengcun, um, which are the most basic administrative division in China. And our current data sets cover 1,100 villages spanning in 31 provinces, 217 cities, and 536 counties. And lastly, every piece of data we enter follows a strict three-step protocol. Um, our first step is to examine a gazetteer for different types of data and use page numbers as the label of the source. And then we manually enter the extracted data into a data entry platform based on Drupal. And finally, uh, we manually proofread all data entries. So here is what it looks like inside a village gazetteer. Um, we can see that the information can take form in both regular narration and data tables. And the first step is just to transfer these information as page numbers using an internal form we developed like this. This is our paging form. Um, and the, uh, here are two screenshots of the data entry platform. We will use the previous form as a reference to search in a gazetteer and then input the data. <coughs> So the website of the CCVG data project is bilingual in both English and Chinese. And we also have a coverage map based on Google Maps. And you can see the <coughs> geographic distribution of the villages covered by the project. Um, on the left, we can see that the villages are divided into se the seven geographic regions of China. And the data sets are stored in the D scholarship repository of the University of Pittsburgh and free for download. But the downloading process can be a bit tricky, which Ruoyun will demonstrate later. And as I mentioned earlier, earlier a database and user interface are coming soon. Next, I'm going to show you some statistics of the project so far. Here is the province distribution of the current 1,071 villages. Um, actually, the reason that the total number is somewhere uh, below 1,100 1, is that we deleted some natural villages as opposed to these administrative villages at the last minute we want to make sure that our source is consistent. Um, and so here we can see that the provinces that possess most gazetteers are Hebei, Henan, Shanxi, and Shandong, somewhere in the middle or North China. And meanwhile, a, a considerable amount of village gazetteers are also available in the coastal provinces. But on the other hand, we can see here, we only have one village gazetteer each in Xinjiang and Hong Kong. Okay. And here is a table of the data count of the project. We now have uh, 20, 20, 000, 2300,000 uh, people. <laughs> Sorry. meaningful data entries uh, in all data sets. Uh, the number already excluded the space field non-available or non-applicable ones. But since uh, gazetteers, the gazetteers do not have a standard in the compilation uh, process, the available data in each gazetteer may vary drastically. Um, but with the total count, the average number of data entries per village we got is somewhere uh, 216. Okay. 
So next, I want to say a few words about our academic engagement in teaching and research so far. Uh, but first, uh, we want to announce that we are going to have a roundtable panel at the coming AAS annual conference on March 26th. And we look forward to seeing you there and to hear your insights. And for research purposes, since we currently provide limited function in cross-searching, um, there have not been many research projects using our database uh, that we are known of. Um, but from the feedback uh, we have received, the project has attracted uh, much interest from scholars and researchers all over the world. Um, here are some potential research questions posed by Dr. Thomas Roski, uh, Emeritus Professor of Economics and History at the University of Pittsburgh. And um, in terms of teaching, Dr. Da Qinghe from the School of Computing and Information at the University of Pittsburgh has supervised two independent study courses last spring and this spring. And in addition, there have also been students using uh, the CCVG data project for their coursework. The first project I want to introduce here is for a graduate course in library science, uh, data and information in systems. Uh, the student investigated the influence of arable land area on gross output value in Chinese villages. And adjusted data sets from the CCVG data were imported in Python and conclusions were drawn based on regression analysis and interpretations of the graphs. Um, another course project is for the Digital Studies and Methods Seminar course. Um, this project aims to demonstrate and visualize the complexity and diversity of Chinese local performances on the village level uh, through ArcGIS mapping tools. The project purports to construct a connection between performance art and space as well as uh, identify the less representative genres to draw attention to the preservation of uh, certain cultural heritage. The local performance here we can see on the map uh, were categorized into storytelling performances and local operas. Um, by connecting each genre using light dashed, heavy dash, and solid lines here, the student was able to present a preliminary visualization of the geographical distribution of Chinese local performances. And this project is inspired by the CCVG data map, and the data was also extracted from the ULS Chinese Village Gazetteer collection. So I will wrap up my part with the future work for the CCVG data project. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we will expand the CCVG collection to 3000 villages. Um, another possible direction is to transfer the same methodology to other to digitize other types of gazetteers like hydraulics, rail transport and public health gazetteers. Furthermore, um, the CCVG project preserves uh, the historical data and can be applied to multiple areas. We openly welcome researchers, uh, industrial partners, and government officials to collaborate with us to work on problems like uh, site, site selection, uh, target marketing, poverty alleviation, infrastructure construction, and so forth. Um, meanwhile, our, pro our programming squad has finished the database design and they're now developing a scholar friendly interface for multiple research purposes. Here I have a few slides for you kindly provided by our programmers and the interface is not quite finished yet and this is, uh, this is the prototype they developed in Axure. For uh, here is the search page. We have uh, filters by province, city, and county. 
And there's also the input box uh, for users to type. And once we select the villages we want, they will be displayed in the box at the bottom here. And besides village search, we can also do a topic search to select our interested categories and subcategories of data. And here we also provide choices of particular years or year ranges. Um, here is the prototype of the display page. Uh, once we refine our search criteria, we can have the result generated like this. If we uh, run into uh, multiple layers of subcategories, we should also be able to filter them in the display page uh, like this. This is, the, this is an example of the re search result of the economic category. So by the time uh, we launch the interface, users should be able to query information of a single village, village of the same county, city, or provinces, and will also be able to uh, compare specific categories among multiple villages. Okay, so now I will give the space to my colleague Ru Yun, and she will introduce the data dictionary and downloading process from the user perspective. Please, Ru. Thank you, Yun. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ru Yun Zhou, and I'm a team member in the CCBG project. So in the following minutes, I'm gonna talk about how to download the CCVG data set and how to use the data dictionary for your own project and research. Um, as Yuan said, we are currently working on our interface design, which will support downloading function in the future. So far, you can download the data sets directly through the CCVG website or our this scholarship platform. Um, actually, we have a pretty much I mean, a pretty clear download uh, instruction on the CCVG website, but we think it could be more helpful if we, uh, I can give you a live demonstration. And this demonstration will take place on the Windows system. So let's go to the CCVG website. Um, as you can see, um, there are six columns and one of them is our data. If you do not, if you have no idea how the downloading procedure looks like, you can click the how to download inside. And you scroll down and here is the instruction here. You can just click this link and it will be directly redirected to the this scholarship page where we can download all the data. Uh, if you are familiar, you can also find the data sets and data dictionary, scroll down, and you can click the free download link and to be transferred to the this scholarship platform. But please be noted that um, this dic uh, data dictionary link is currently invalid. So if you are interested in the dictionary, please also use this link for the link on the how to download inside web page and go to the this scholarship and you can find all the data sets as well as the dictionary on this platform. Um, so if you are interested in all the data sets and the dictionary, uh, you can just locate this zip file called all data sets and data dictionary and click download. It's pretty simple and you can see all the data sets are here in the Excel files and also the di data dictionary is a PDF file. But if you are interested in just one single data, um, the downloading procedure will be a little bit tricky and now I will show you how to download. Let's take the gadgeteer information. For example, if you also just directly click the download, it will actually pop up in the new website you can now save it to your laptop. So here is how we can solve this problem. Instead of directly clicking, you can right click download and choose the save link as a uh, window will pop up and you can save this file to your um, desktop or somewhere 
you uh, you prefer. Just to make sure the type of the file is Microsoft Excel, the CSV file, and you click save. And here we go. Now you can just save it to your computer. It's pretty, I would say it's pretty easy uh, just as long as you get used to it. Okay. Um, and now I will just simply talk about, this is on the, um, on the Windows system. So if you're using a MacBook, the procedure is almost the same with some just wording issues. So the previous steps are the same, but on the, the scholarship page as the screenshots shown here, uh, after you right click download, uh, you can choose download linked file and it will be um, saved in your download folder on your MacBook. But if you want to save it somewhere else, you can choose the download linked file as, and here's a window pop-up. Um, the save file is in CSV format, but you can also use Microsoft Excel to open it without any problem. So here is a downloading, what the downloading procedure looks like. And now I will just briefly talk about uh, how can you use the data dictionary. So if you are on the uh, this scholarship page, you can see the uh, dictionary is like a 46 page PDF for uh, analysis or your research. So what actually is the data dictionary? So it serves as a user guide um, that helps researchers understand the definitions for each data category, field, term, as well as extraction criteria. So in a word, it's both a data entry standards manual and a user guide. So before you use the data for analysis, make sure you check the dictionary first to understand the definitions for each variable. Um, for example, if you are interested, if you're interested in the number of women of childbearing age, um, we noted that uh, if both married and unmarried women of childbearing age are available, only the number of married women is recorded because in China, birth control measures are mainly for married women. And if you are uh, interested in the, elect the first year of electricity service in one village. Uh, here we refer to the supply of lightning. And as for the data selection and data collection standards in the dictionary, I will use some examples to explain how you can view this data. So our data range is from 1949 to the uh, final year of data collection, also called Xia Nian. And when we record the data, we just use the original measurement units and we usually do not recalculate the data. For example, here, as you can see, uh, in one village, when we record the gross input value and collective economic income, we just use the 10,000 Chinese yuan at the unit. And as for the per capita income, uh, in the gazetteer, they use the yuan and we do not recalculate to match them. Uh, that's how we uh, record or extract the data. But there is one exception. If a gadgeteer provides average monthly electricity consumption, we usually multiply the figure or the variable by 12, make sure it were recorded uh, yearly. And as also when you are looking through or using the data, uh, you can see some figures and that's how we uh, deal with them. So if uh, there is a, there's some obscure data. We usually directly extract the rough number instead of just recording it as a bit. Like if you see a 50, the data is 50. It's not usually mean the number is exactly 50. In the original gadgeteer, it can be expressed as around 50, less than 50, approximately, uh, approximately 50, something like that. And also if you see 50, there is another condition. So if the uh, data are provided as a range, we also take the minimum number. For example, if the original expression is 5260, also we will just record it as 50. And also you might notice some sharp increases or decreases in some categories of our data. 
and usually because of the data of the village itself may have some history of mark and division. In this condition, you can just refer to the original village gadgeteer for more information. We also use the data dictionary for our data normalization. Um, occasionally, uh, village gadgeteers record data with historical events. Uh, in this dictionary, there is a list of the specific year ranges this VG data has ascribed to this time period. For example, if you see a year range from uh, 1947 to 1952, you can refer it to the land reform event. And similarly, if uh, you see 1966 to 1976, it usually refers to the Cultural Revolution happening in China. Um, and also, if you open the data set, you might see there are lots of data marked as not applicable. And there are three reasons why those data are not extracted. First, there is no relevant data. We cannot find a matching one. Second, the data content itself is too ambiguous and we usually do not judge it by ourselves. We just choose to not record that part of data. And also if the data content does not match the data collection standards like I talked before, and we also choose to not record that data in our data uh, sets. Uh, and now we've been working on the wording of the dictionary so that the language could be more concise and, uh, and clear. And hopefully they will help in the users to better understand the data sets. And when you download the data, uh, look through the data dictionary and use the data sets for your project, you would probably encounter more or less questions or problems. And that's the time when your feedback can make a lot of sense. You can let us know your opinions toward the database uh, using our online survey. You can either access the survey in the last column um, on the CPVG website, or sometimes the survey request will pop up when you look through the website. Um, and after reading your contact information, you will receive notifications on the data updates. Your feedback can really help us to improve the user interface design. And based on your feedbacks we receive, we can also make plans for our future work and search for potential collaboration opportunities. And here are the city region related links presented today, and we put them here for your reference. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. <laughs> So that's all about the um, data downloading and data use procedure. And thank you for your time. Please share with us your questions and comments in the chat or live.